Okay, in this video we're going to try to develop the algorithm for division of fractions without actually telling kids what the algorithm is. That is, we're going to look at the conceptual nature of what division actually is to help develop the algorithm for division of fractions that we all know and love. So to do that, we are going to use these eight problems and hopefully in the end come up with the algorithm along the way. To start off, however, we should probably do a quick refresher on the conceptual nature of dividing by regular numbers. For a more detailed look at this, you can look at one of our other videos. But for now, let's just go back to regular division. So if we have 4 and we divide that by 4, that's pretty straightforward. That's 1. If we have 4 and we divide that by 2, that's also pretty straightforward. That's 2. And again, if we take 4 and divide by 1, we should have, as expected, 4. So now the question is, what happens when we divide by a fraction? So if we take 4 and divide by 1 half, let's use the previous questions to think about what we're asking when we are asking a division question. When we divide 4 by 4, we are asking how many pieces of length 4 fit into 4, and that's 1. Similarly, when we divide 4 by 2, how many pieces of length 2 fit into 4, and that's 2. And when we divide 4 by 1, how many pieces of length 1 fit into 4, and that's 4. And so when we divide by a half, we are asking how many pieces of length 1 half fit into 4. And so in this case, that is 8. So that's one way that we can think of division. When we're dividing by a number, we're asking ourselves how many pieces of that length fit inside the number we are dividing. Now we have to think of that slightly differently when we are talking about taking a number divided by a number that's bigger than it. So for example, if we take 4 and we divide by 8, 8 doesn't fit into 4. In fact, it only partially fits into 4. Specifically in this case, half of 8 fits into 4, and so when we divide 4 by 8, we get 1 half. So we still are making the same analogy. Whenever we divide 4 by a number, we're asking how many pieces of that size number fit into 4. And at some point, if the number is bigger than 4, then we're going to get a fractional answer. Another way to think of this, instead of how many 8's fit into 4, is by realizing that since 8 is bigger than 4, the answer is going to be less than 1. And so instead we ask, what proportion of 8 is 4? Which is still 1 half. So let's use those ideas to answer the following questions and develop our division algorithm. So we want to divide 1 by 1 half. So let's do that visually. So there's 1, and there is 1 half. And we want to find, we want to ask ourselves how many pieces of size one half fit into one. And so we can see readily that two of those pieces fit in. Or we can say we have one, one of these pieces, one half, two times. Or one times two equals two. Now let's take a look at three divided by one fifth. So there's 3, and we want to divide by 1 fifth. So we are asking ourselves, how many pieces of size 1 fifth fit into 3? And so we can just fit them in rather nicely, and we see that 15 pieces of size 1 fifth fit into 3. Or we can say we have 3 of these pieces 5 times. 3 of these pieces of 1 fifth, 3 1 fifths, 5 times. 3 times 5 equals 15. Let's try a unit fraction divided by a unit fraction. 1 half divided by 1 fifth. So there's 1 half, and we are dividing by 1 fifth. So we are asking how many 1 fifths fit into 1 half. And so we have our piece sizes. Let's get rid of the fraction so we can just look at this visually. We can see that two of these fit in and a little bit more. Let's add some grid lines here to see what that little bit more is. 
And so we're going to make some grid lines so that they all line up. And we can see that we have two and just a bit more than two. And the question is, how much more of two there is there? Well, we can see that that is exactly one of these pieces. And that piece is, is exactly one half of our original one fifth piece. So it's two and one half. Another way that we can think about that is we have five halves. And we can further say that we have half of one of the original pieces five times. So again, we have one half of one of the original pieces, so one half of one fifth, right here, five times. So one half times five, which is equal to five halves. Let's try another one like this. So let's make this just a little bit more complex. Instead of one half divided by one fifth, we're doing three halves divided by one fifth. So first let's get three halves, and we are asking ourselves, how many one-fifths fit into three halves? So we can see that we have a little bit more than seven of them. And when we add our grid lines, we can use tenths again. You can see that this is exactly one-half of a full piece. And so we have seven and one-half. So let's think of this answer in terms of these half pieces. And this, or the original question was three halves divided by one-fifth. And so we can think of this as how many of the three one-halves fit in. So there are three one-halves, and there are five of them. And so we know that the answer is seven and a half, but if we think of this, so we have three halves divided by one-fifth. Here are three halves, here is one-fifth, and we have five of these three halves. So three halves times five gives 15 halves, or our seven and a half. Okay, so let's take a look at a whole number divided by a non-unit fraction. One divided by two-thirds. So there's our one, and we're gonna divide by two-thirds. And we can see that we have just a little bit more than uh, one whole one. And so the question is, how much more? So let's add our grid lines, and so you can see that we have one whole piece and exactly half of another. And so our answer is one and one half, or three halves, or this is one group of three halves. So one divided by two thirds is one and a half, or three halves, and this can be rewritten as one group, one group of three halves. Let's try one more whole number divided by a non-unit fraction. Two divided by three-fourths. So there's one, two, and we want to divide by three-fourths. So there is one three-fourths, and there's two three-fourths, and we have some left over. So there's one three-fourths again, two three-fourths, and then the question remains, how many more of these three-fourths do we have? So let's add our grid lines in. And so this is two and two thirds of the last piece, two and two thirds. But we can think of that in terms of how many of these yellow pieces we have. These yellow pieces are thirds of our three fourths. And so we have eight thirds of our three fourths. And another way to think of this is two groups of four thirds. So two divided by three fourths, three-fourths fit into two, two and two-thirds times, which is eight-thirds, but we can also think of that as two groups of four-thirds, or eight-thirds. So now let's do a unit fraction divided by a whole number, one-fifth divided by two. So there's one-fifth, and when we're taking anything and dividing by two, that means break it up into two equal parts. And so let's add our scale and see how we can break this up into two equal parts. And so two equal parts are made up of tenths. Another way that we can think about this is just by looking at this, 
what's one half of one fifth? So one tenth is also one half of one fifth. One half of one fifth equals one tenth. So we add one half of one fifth. And it's also important to notice that if we have one fifth of one half, so let's break one half up into five equal pieces. One fifth of one half is also one tenth. So even though we know we can reverse the order of these from the commutative property, it's important to realize that visually it still represents the same value, in this case, one tenth. Let's try one more unit fraction divided by a whole number. One half divided by four. So there's one half, and we want to divide that into four equal pieces. So let's add our grid, and we can see we have four equal pieces when we use eighths. So one half divided into four equal pieces means each of those pieces is an eighth. And another way to think about that is this piece is one fourth of our one half. So one half divided by four can be thought up as one fourth of one half, which equals one eighth. So we had one fourth of one half, and just as before, we can take that and take one half of one fourth. So here's one fourth and we want to break that up into two equal pieces, and we can see that in the same way that represents an eighth, and so one half of one fourth is an eighth. So one fourth of one half, one fourth of one half is an eighth, and one half of one fourth, one half of one fourth is an eighth. So let's summarize what we have so far. So let's use a little bit of patterning to see if we can now make some conclusions. And so now if you look at these eight problems and these representations of their solutions, ask your students what they notice about the original division question and our related multiplication question. And perhaps after some discussion, your students will come to the conclusions we expect and you can add some color to shed some light for those students who are still struggling. So, 1 divided by 1 half becomes 1 times 2, or 2 over 1. 3 divided by 1 fifth becomes 3 times 5, or 5 over 1. 1 half divided by 1 fifth becomes 1 half times 5. Again, the same as 5 over 1. 3 halves divided by 1 fifth becomes 3 halves times 5, also 5 over 1. 1 divided by 2 thirds becomes 1 times 3 halves. 2 divided by 3 fourths becomes 2 times 4 thirds. 1 fifth divided by 2 becomes 1 fifth times 1 half, and 1 half divided by 4 becomes 1 times 1 fourth. And so in getting the answer for the division problem, we developed a related multiplication problem, and there seems to be a connection between the two. Ask your students to see if they can use that connection to answer this question. 3 halves divided by 4 fifths. So have your students try this question using what they've figured out. So if we look at these questions, whenever we divided by a unit fraction, that was the same as multiplying by the denominator of that unit fraction. And whenever we divided by a whole number, it was the same as multiplying by a fraction with a denominator the same as that whole number. And when we divided by a non-unit fraction, it was the same as multiplying by a fraction that had the numerator and denominator inverted. And so for 3 halves divided by 4 fifths, what we would expect is that that can be rewritten as 3 halves times 5 fourths. We know from our previous video that when you multiply fractions, that is the same as just multiplying across. And so this becomes 15 eighths. So we want 3 halves divided by 4 fifths. So there's our 1 4 fifths, and we can see that there's not quite 2 4 fifths there. So we need to figure out what portion of the 4 fifths we have. And so we can see that when we break these up into tenths, then the piece that is 4 fifths in length has 8 tenths filling it up, of which we want 7 tenths. And so we can see that our answer, which is a whole 
four fifths and part of a second four fifths. So you might think that this is 15 tenths, but in fact, we have to think of this as parts of four fifths. And four fifths is made up of eight of these tenths. And so that means one whole is eighths. And we have 15 of those pieces. So our answer is 15 eighths. And so what we can conclude from this is that if we are dividing by a fraction, that's the same as inverting the fraction that we are dividing by and multiplying it by our original fraction.